Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is day 17 of my book read. Let's get going. So this is all going to be the two star reads that I didn't like. It's going to be interesting, so let's get started. So my first book was A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. Tavia is already at odds with the world, forced to keep her seven identity under wraps in a society that wants to keep her kind under lock and key. Never mind, she's also stuck in Portland, Oregon. Oregon, a city that city with only a handful of black folk and even fewer of those with magical powers. At least she has a Bessie Effie by her side as a tackle high school and drama, family secrets, and I'm included to crushes. So I did, I actually did enough this one at 54%, even though I didn't give it two stars. I thought it was very slow and like the first half, um, I feel like the message of the book was trying to tell, uh, it all kind of overtook the plot itself. There were kind of several, like several times I was wondering where this story was going because I was just so confused. I didn't really know what was happening. So, the only interesting part was the mythology side to it, which is where the two side comes in. That's the only, um, stars that goes into it. Just, like, the mythology is really interesting. The plot, I hated the plot. It was just clunky and just not really well thought out and then it really was flow, flowing, if you will into it into the book very well and so I can I couldn't really follow what was what was going on and the characters Ify and Tavia I could not tell them apart. I listened to this audio and I could not tell them apart whatsoever. I thought it was like quite literally the same person. So and the world building it was also non existent. I didn't know where you were half the time. So that was also really confusing. I just thought this book could have been better. Even the cover is really beautiful. I do love the cover, but the story could have been fixed way more. My next one is Three Kisses One Minute by Rashani Korsky. So it's about discovering the magical true love on one fateful magical night in three kisses, one midnight. But nothing is simple as the first scene and as many approaches the common learn that it would take more than special than a spell to recognize those who offer the love and to embrace all the magic that follows. So this it is still a little bit of my two starish even though I gave it two point five to three. I didn't really particularly enjoy it that much. Uh, it was still cute. I still kind of enjoyed it. But, like, the plot itself wasn't there, I just found it to be lacking. The conversation was all over the place, which made me even more confusing than it needs to be. I just didn't know what they were talking about or who were they talking to. Like, and, like, the actual magic being practiced by the main characters, I kind of liked that. So that was really nice. I still enjoyed the magical aspect that was dealt and how it was included in the three storylines, but this could have been so much better. My next book is An Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. R. Penn. Hunter Yi has perfect aim with the bow and arrow, but all else in his life feels wrong. He is like a thing heartened by his family's past mistakes. The only things keeping him from running away are his little brother, a supernatural wind, and the bewitching girl at his new high school. As Hunter alone and navigate the family's enmity and secrets, everything around him begins to fall apart. All they can depend on is their love, but time is running out and fate will have its way. I give this a 2.5. It did have a really strong beginning, but it, eventually I just couldn't care. It was so slow. And I really did like the mythology part to it, and, but this one was just went so strong. But, again, I just lost interest in it. The story was kind of all over the place. The pacing was off. I hated the pacing. And the ending, well, it was kind of rushed, I feel like. So, and I just didn't really enjoy the ending. Um, I only really enjoyed the mas magical aspects of the story. And I kind of liked Luna and Hunter, so 
I don't know, I just felt really annoyed by this book, so I couldn't really continue to enjoy it, but yeah, I, I kind of like Mona and Hunter, which is sad because this is supposed to be like a Romeo and Juliet uh, story, and they love Romeo and Juliet, but it just didn't mean made a cut. My next book is Tiger Queen by Annie Solian. So this is a fantasy adventure that tells the story of a fierce desert princess battling to save her kingdom. I gave it 2.5, um, unfortunately Tiger Queen was really predictable and not in the way that I enjoyed it. So this story was it was supposed to be about a woman warrior, but honestly it had like a way more male messages, even though this is all about feminism, so I don't really know how that works. It really started off strong when Princess Katini, who was about to face the second to last suitor in the arena, setting the stone like the tone of the story really quickly. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't make a cut, so. And, and like tying all of that up with the plot is filled with conveniences. Like, there were so many convenience. I just couldn't help but to shake my head just because I just didn't know, like how one the com conveniences turned out, and there were so many tropes, which I hated as well. There was just no character's depth and no plot. Honestly, nothing was really original in the story, and so I just didn't really like it. I thought it could have been better, but it was just really convenient for like almost throughout the entire book. My next one is Nobleman's Guide to Scandal and Shipwrecks. So this features a teenage angel in Martin Go as he desperately seeks the now adult Monty and Felicity, the oldest siblings he never knew he had. So I'm really disappointed with this. I gave it 2.5 and I was really hoping for this one because I loved the first two, but this one just didn't really quite work out for me. I was so sad. And I feel like it wasn't really fun, it wasn't really carefully and joyful like how the other two books were. And honestly, the character development just seemed forced. And the adventure, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, kind of not. So I was just really disappointed. Like, I loved the first two, but this book was just really pointless for me, in all honesty. I would have been better off with the two books being the ending. So I really want to enjoy this one. I'm so sad. So yeah, I just found it really boring and like that's all I can say about this book. I just found it really boring and lacking in almost everything. There's just no magical feeling like how it was in the first two books. Uh, so, and also it was really long. I didn't think it was necessary to be that long. But yeah, I, I just felt pretty disappointed. And my next book, this is actually the number two books of the trilogy and there's the Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And the Inherent Games ended with the bombshell and how now Harris Avery Gams has to pick up the pieces and find the man who might hold the answers to all of her questions. Including why Tobias Hawthorne left his entire fortune to Avery, a virtual stranger rather than to his own daughters or grandsons. Yeah, I'm just gonna really care much. I thought the first book was a little bit more enjoyable, but this one just felt flat completely. I I was surprised I managed to finish it. I was so close to DNF, but I somehow pushed through. I listened to this as an audiobook, but I somehow pushed through, so that's a bonus, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, I just hated like I believe this book was more focused on the romance than the first book. The first book had like way more mysterious and the mysteries and the puzzles, riddles that they have to figure it out, which I really love. This one, it was just moments. That's about it. And everyone was like, should I choose him? Should I choose him? I don't know what to do. Ah. So, I really hate when books do that. Like, in all honesty, I think fantasy romance should be its own genre. Just leave fantasy as its own and have fantasy romance in its other genre. Because I'm just so sick and tired of romance and fantasy that just overtakes like 99% of the books. The 1% goes to the plot. Like just be in some genre, just don't be connected with fantasy. <laughs> I'm so done with it. So this one just fell flat and just had no mystery as how it did in the first book. Everyone was really annoying and whining, especially Emily. 
She was so whiny I wanted to pull my hair out. I hated her in this book. It was, I didn't know what happened. Like she was not the same as she was in the first one. Same goes with the boys, Jackson and Grayson. Like they were completely different human beings. So yeah, and like this book was really trying too hard and just, it was just trying too hard and it wasn't clever enough and just literally lost the plot of the book itself. And I honestly feel like this book also had like no complexity to the characters like how it did in the first book, but and I hear the writing. Some things in writing will feel flat and robotic, so yeah, and this book was a bummer. My next book is The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Cooley. She is the most powerful genie at all. Of all, he is a boy from the streets. The love will shake the world. As time unravels and her enemies close in, Zara finds herself unsuspended between danger and desire in this retelling of Aladdin. So I gave it 2.5. I couldn't really enjoy it. I didn't really know what was going on and I just hated it. But I did really enjoy like the settings. It was a Middle Eastern setting. Aladdin retail. Who doesn't love Aladdin retail? I did kind of like Aladdin way more than Zada. I just found Aladdin really nice. And there was really lots of world building, so really intriguing world that I really enjoyed learning about. And the writing, I really thought the writing was fun as well. So even though the writing was beautiful, um, everything was just dumped on you. It was just trying too hard to explain by just being it was just overly explained way too much, which made it confusing. There were too many things going on, which made me hard to keep track. Like the main plots, that had subplots, and those subplots, are you ready? And even had even more subplots, so like, what is going on? So there was a portion that just kind of seemed like filler, like most of the book, maybe 70, 75% of the book was just like quite literally a filler, which I hate it. I hate when books do that. And honestly, it could have been so condensed a lot more, and there were so many villains, which made it hard to track. And Ginny, I didn't really like the love interest, so I don't know, I just didn't really like how it was going on. My next one is probably still one of the most blowing book I ever read to this day. I wish I have not read it. And that is Carnival number two by Le uh, It is Legendary by Stephanie Garland. I gave it two stars. Or oh, 2.5 actually. I must have enjoyed something in this book. So I just hated it. I, it was particularly boring. I can't remember if this was the book or the finale which I never read and I will never do. I believe it was the second book that had fates that just came out of nowhere. I have no idea who the fates were, or why they were there, or when they even came from, because that, they were not really mentioned in the first book as far as I remember. So, honestly, it was just a dump. <laughs> but I just could not connect the main characters. It was really predictable with barely any plot twist. And and that was just a, it was just like a fake fiance trope all over again. So the plot wasn't really a great pain when it came, came to the game itself because there was a game. So, and all it didn't make sense because there was, like, what was the purpose if other people can't win? So, I didn't really like tell it in this one at all. Like, I just... She was unbearable in this book. She was just so annoying and I just wanted to be done with her already. Like, I cannot stand her at all. Scarlet was a little bit decent, but her, oh my god, I don't know what happened to her. And I just, I just hated Dante as well. Like, he can, he doesn't have a personality. He was just so boring. Like, he had no charisma and that whole fake fiance thing, so... I don't know, I kind of like Jack. I thought he was way fun in here. He was intriguing and mysterious in this book as well. So I don't know, I think the ending was not about no open ended. I feel like, from what I can remember, I feel like it was open ended, but 
I don't know, I don't think it really made sense for this book to be open-ended, but I don't know, I just hated, I kind of hated this book, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately the book did start out strong and I sometimes hated the like, you know, writings that didn't really make sense at all. Like, I don't know. I think the book was trying too hard to be nice and flowery and lyrical, but it just didn't really work that way. Those are my two stars reads, which I th was disappointed. <laughs> so let me know what was your two star read, and please like, comment, subscribe, and so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one. Bye!